Hey guys, it's David here from Rapid QS. We're just out here in Pepper Mall. Today we're going to see Stefan White from Mount White Builders, um, self made building owner. We're here at his house today. We're just going to do a podcast and a bit of a sit down. So watch this episode. Stefan, um, surfer, building business owner, homeowner here in Papamoa. Can we call you an Insta celebrity? Not quite sure. You obviously take it quite seriously. Um, somewhat of a family man and loves the hustle. So, yeah, thanks very much for giving me your time today, bro. Uh, thanks for coming down, man. Hey, where did it all start, mate? Obviously, the majority of our following is all um, young builders, um, business owners, uh, guys who are either apprentices or third years, fourth years. They all want to know the questions of uh, going out on your own, doing your own thing. So give me a rundown from left school to where you are now. Yeah, so left school, um, it, was, it was the 07, 08 recession. And um, all I ever wanted to be was a builder. Like yep. the boys um, who I looked up to, I eh, always, you know, driving past the beachfront. I was from Whangamata and they always had the apron on and pretty fit fellas and um, yeah. and they, they always had all the chicks and the, the, <laughs> the, the, I don't know, the chicks like the tradies and yeah, then um, they always surfed. I looked up to them for their surfing and then I, I just wanted to be a part of that. So Me. Um, anyway, I, I'd always talk about it to them and what it was like to be a builder and then my brother was mates with them, was the older gen and then um, I was getting a bit over school, I wasn't really going to school much and, um, and then one day one of them rung me up and he's like, do you want to an apprenticeship and I was like fuck I'd love to and yeah. I went home and told mum well, I was meant to be moving to Taranga with her because she just sold up in Fonga and um, I was like I'm not coming I'm, I'm, I'm going to work she's like when are you starting you're not and I was like I'm starting tomorrow and that was it and yeah. then um, yeah just been building ever since I was 16 yeah good yeah. What's uh, what was your first paycheck as an apprentice builder because everyone uh, loves rates 8 bucks yeah <laughs> it was, it was um, 9 bucks an hour taxed yeah, and I remember he brought it down to the beach, and I was so stoked. The guy Titch I worked for, we still still close. Um, he brought it down to the beach, and it was like two hundred and seventy bucks cash. Yeah, and then um, and then he's like, oh, that's cash. So yeah, now nah, and took another twenty out of it, and so it, w- it worked out to be like two hundred and fifty bucks, and because yeah. he just thought he'd keep a twenty out of it, but I was so stoked, I didn't say a yeah, word. Yeah. No back chat. I was like, fuck, that's mean. Went and ticked up a Ford Ranger straight away. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. Um, how long did you stay with your main company as an apprentice the whole time? Um, how long did it take you? And how did you go with the bookwork stuff? That's always um, a big No, nah, I didn't actually stay with the main company. Wonga was like a tight knit community. Yeah. And like, um, it was more like I'd like the projects. And mm. I, ne- I never ever left anyone on bad terms. I could actually go back to every boss I've ever worked for. Yeah. But it was more like he was building that beachfront house. Hey, I want to go be part of that, or hey, I, I like that project. So it was yeah. it was never on bad terms. I, I worked for my sister's husband. He's he's a big building company out there, Judd Builders. Um, Pete Davison, Man. my other mate Lundy. Um, yeah. Um, and it took me bang on four years to get qualified. Man. And um, I was shit at bookwork at school because I, I I had no purpose. But I I hummed through my my Man. bookwork for my apprenticeship because yeah. I just, I just loved it and yep. wanted to get qualified. Yeah. Did you kind of set out like, uh, like I remember when I was doing mine, I just would, uh, every Wednesday, six to eight, I'd just pump it, no excuses. We always had rugby Tuesday, Thursdays. Did you have like a routine or? Nah, I no. probably, to be honest, like in life, I never got into routines until I started my company. Yep. Like I was, I always done work on my apprenticeship, but I never really had such good life routines that yep. more come once I started my company, but. Yeah, I, I was motivated to get it done. All yeah. I wanted to do was be a qualified builder. Eh? Nice. Yeah. Did you have good foremans along the way? I feel like that's always, you say, obviously you look up to your, you've got role models like your parents or family yeah. friends, but I feel like a foreman, you're with them 45 yeah. hours a week. <laughs> yeah, I look up to, um, he'll get a big head because he yeah, watches yeah. <laughs> Juddy, old man Juddy. Um, he's still family. My sister's yeah. obviously married to um, his son, Josh, but I, I look up to Mark and I, he always taught me, he taught me what a dodger block was yeah. and a string line. And so yeah, I always like looked up to him. And then another guy, Stu, I worked for, um, I, I looked up to him. And I I reckon, and then a guy from Aussie, Jez, and just, I, I reckon I moulded myself as a builder. I probably took a little part of maybe 20% of each foreman. Mean. And then 
of each of their way and mould it up my own way. Yep. Yeah, that's the yep. way to go, eh? Yeah. Um, so your apprenticeship overall was pretty good. Um, when did you form Mount White Builders and how long have you been going for now? Uh, so I, I started off, I'm going to say this on camera, but I started off doing heaps of cashies on the weekends. Yeah, yeah um, cut that. And so I, um, <laughs> yeah, cut that. But yeah, I, I um, had, a, had a job um, on wages when I was 22 and then I was, I was running three other guys on the weekends doing doing projects and I was making more money on the weekends yeah. and on Saturday, Sunday than I was on the whole week. Yeah, it's I was crazy. probably making double, triple. Yeah. And then I, I wasn't actually quite qualified. Yeah. And then I um I just I was I was I was just about done and then I just went to see my boss. I was like, hey I'm I'm done. How much notice do you need? I'm done. Yeah. And um, yep. I was twenty two. Yeah. Yeah. And then I went out and I was a sole trader. Um twenty two to twenty four and then I'll just get contractors in to help me. And then I formed the White Builders just under eight years ago. Man. Yep. Um, how did you get your first lot of kind of like weekend jobs, cashies? That's a big one. People are always obviously stressing when's the next job going to come yep. from, etc. How did you go about jobs, sales? No, nah, I've always like believed in like the law of attraction. Yeah. And then so if I still to this day, if ever I'm like, I'm only booked out four months down the track or six yep. months down the track, I'll... I, I, I like, but I, it sounds crazy. Some people don't believe it, but manifestation. Yeah. And then 100%. I love talking. Like, I love talking to people. Yeah, yeah. I like get a kick out of like talking to people. And then I just, and I just promote my company everywhere I went. Yeah. I just, I'd find a way like to be like, hey, I'm Stefan and I've got a building company. Like, yeah, everywhere nice. I went. So I'd walk, I walk into cafes and come out with couple, like, couple yeah, numbers, couple names. Yeah, numbers and connections. And then, so I just promoted, that's all I promoted was Man. Yeah, Stefan from White Builders, every, wherever I was in the surf, at the hot pools, in a cafe, yep. Yep. at a mate's house, I'd get numbers. Man. Yeah, I still to this day. Yeah. Yep. 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 Um, would you say, what's been your sort of strategy behind the whole Instagram stuff? You obviously take that a little bit seriously. You, do you get a lot of work through that? What's your main kind of yeah. promotion through that? I do get work through it. Um, most of my work's like word of mouth, yep. um, but I do... I, that for me, I found like like I've met you through it, yeah, and then I've mainly got like real good connections through, yep. through Instagram and and just like different sub trades like plumbers and sparkies yep. and jib stoppers and mm. I've just found it's a real good way to meet people. I've actually met some of my real good mates through yep. Instagram because oh, crazy you only follow what you're interested in. Yep. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Um, in regards of your like how you get your like say the projects or the work you take on are you sort of doing more contract work to tier one and tier two developers or are you doing sort of mainly full contract work residential stuff what's your kind of base of work yeah, and how so, do you get it yeah so we um we we're in with heaps of schools we do heaps of direct to the schools like yeah. the board funded projects um all my subbies will tell you this, I'll probably do the craziest schedules you'll ever see, like the most <laughs> aggressive schedules. Yeah. And I'll just do anything to stick to those schedules. Yeah. And then like I'll do I know like I've seen other builders' schedules and I've done a three month one and I've done a on the same project two weeks. Yeah. Like, no word of a lie. Yeah, it's and crazy. they're like, Can you do this? I'm like, Yeah, you're gonna have defects, but yeah, I'll get it across the line and you'll get in, but we'll we have to come back and do Yeah. Yeah, so that so we do yeah, we're the main contractor on um school projects like not massive massive mm. projects like medium to small um we're a main contractor on we do high-end residential like new builds yeah and then heaps of renos yep. yeah heaps of, but yeah and then um quite close with alaska construction yeah they're, big, they're big just a management right? company and I'm, I'm mates with the qs's and i get along real good with the owner we're actually renovating the owner's house at the moment oh no shit yeah where's yeah. the owner live uh, he lives in Taranga, up in Taranga. Hills. Yeah, yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah, there's an owner up in Auckland too. Yeah, yeah. But um, that's the only company I ever contract to. Yeah, yeah fair because enough. Because I trust them. Yeah. And they're, they're not trying to screw mm. me down. They've got a real abundant mindset. Yeah. Which is which I've carried through into my company. That's good. Eh? So I like working with them. Yeah. I but, feel like um, it's it can show a lot to a contractor um who can sub like. Uh, subcontract to a big company and withhold that relationship because you're forever hearing of a main contractor firing labor only yeah. builders constantly rotating crews yeah 100 percent. i see it all the time yeah with every other yeah and uh, we get hit hunted by a lot of other yeah like companies like alaska but we, we just stay loyal to alaska because yeah. we, we've got a good relationship and yeah they're not trying to burn me or stiff yeah. me or like you hear guys and they they're like oh i um 
I do all this extra work. So they, I'm like, how did the job go for you? Because I've seen them fucking on some big project in town and they'll mm. be a company that's maybe come from Resi and they're like, oh, I just done all this extra shit. So it didn't go that good. And I'm like, that's kind of where you make your money. Yeah. Like on extra stuff. Extra and if you've got a good relationship, like with those QSs from those big companies, they'll yeah, teach man. you. I kind of, they kind of taught me like yeah. everything I know. Yeah. From, Pricing. From, yeah, from, tendering, work, from yeah. working with them yeah. is how I structured my my company and yeah. i'm like forever thankful and i'll yeah and i'll never step on their toes yeah it's good yeah, eh? like i'll never price because i've been offered to price stuff that they're pricing yeah but i, I never will yeah because that's because good they've taught me everything i know like yeah just working with their qs isn't it that? that's good eh? i think that just submits you you have good longevity for work if you look after them yeah um, you know work yeah. in a good relationship I, just, uh, I have one good question. I want to ask how hard is it to get on the panel for school or education work? Usually that can be quite, you know, you've got to pass quite a few sort of checks and yeah. it can be quite rigorous to get in. Yeah, so you've got to, um, you've obviously got to pl pass all your police vetting yep. and all your crew. Um, and then, yeah, it's um, yeah, it's pretty, yeah, it's pretty cutthroat. Like, yeah. Like, um, the, he'll laugh if he watches this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The <laughs> consultant I do work for is chewed through a fair few builders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I'll just, um, I'll just jump for them. I'll yeah. just prioritise it because yeah. I know it's an important relationship. Yeah. But nice. it's, it's definitely not easy. Yeah. Yeah, I get, you get, get asked that quite a bit. Yeah, I could imagine. But it, it ta it's, it's like a, some people wouldn't want it if I showed, sh showed it to them what, what was involved. Like yeah, man. if I spelled out everything that was involved, they wouldn't want to do it. Yeah. Like it's it's sort of like we're coming into Christmas and everyone's about to sit down and go on holiday with their family. I'm not. Yeah. I'm about to ramp up and crank it and and, and pump sixty to eighty hours a week while everyone else is going to festivals. And yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm going down the lake for a week with my kids, but I'll be on the phone the whole yeah, time working. Yeah. Like hundred phone yeah, calls a day. It's man. no. <laughs> it's no. It, it, it takes over your life. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're not dedicated. And mm. uh, yeah, if you fuck out one project, you're gone. Yeah, yeah. you kind of get one opportunity. Eh? Yeah, yeah. Um, how many guys are you running at the moment, and how hard is it to find good guys in in Tauranga, the Mount, Tafamoa? Yeah. So we're running about ten at the moment. Um, we're getting con contractors when we need to. Um, it was real hard. Mm. Like I, I've kind of always ran ads. Yeah. For guys and just and then just trying to build up stronger teams. Um, yeah, uh, it was hard. I, was, I used to get one to two applicants a month. Yeah, and sure. now I'm probably getting five to ten applicants a week. Yeah, and so I've actually um, I've kept one original. Yeah, and I've actually reshaped my whole company, whole team. Yeah, 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 yeah man. slowly. Yeah, yeah, and um, people get complacent. Yeah, like if, if you have the same guy for too long, he might become yeah, lazy and, and and just expects everything and has their hand out. So. I, yeah, I don't know. I've got the mindset everyone is replaceable. Yeah, I've I've had guys and 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 I've had a good year out of them, and then and then they become complacent. So I've got yeah, shifting no them. qualms and um and moving them on. Yeah. Obviously, try and do it the right way and find them another job and yeah, do it positively. But yeah, yeah, that can yeah that can go two ways. It can sound quite bad, but also like everyone's goals and situations change. Like 100%. they might need to yeah. leave a location, or they're looking at a career change, or they get a I don't know a better yeah. offer. But yeah, you were saying before you've always left your old bosses on good terms, which is um. Yeah, not just a, oh, I might need you in the future, but I think it's just a good Yeah, I'll still go for shape. beers at their yeah. houses. Like we're, yeah. yeah, we're mates yeah. with them all. And, and then uh, maybe I was a little bit harder when I first started my company. Like I was, I was yeah. prob probably a, a, a like harder person all around, but um, like just as of age, like maturing, and I, yeah. I'm, I have a beer with probably the last yeah. you know, bunch of guys that have left me, and yeah, nice. we're all still mates and follow each other on social media. Yeah. And, yeah, we're sweet. Yeah. yeah, I think that's good, eh? Because if you even ever call upon a favour, yeah, we'd be there for each other and yeah. always give them a reference. And it, yeah, yeah, just try and move them on positively. Hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Before you met uh, Rapid QS, <laughs> how did you price your kind of jobs, and what's been your biggest win and your biggest loss on a project? So how how did I price my job? So I've actually taught myself how to price to be honest by hiring i've spent thousands on qs's yeah i i this is being honest i used to get big jobs coming and i wouldn't know what the f i was looking at like <laughs> i could i could like build it on site mm. um yeah even some of them were probably intimidating for me on site but i just 
I, I'd hire a QS and then I'd do my own breakdown without looking at them. I yeah. might pay them two grand. Yeah. I've paid you two grand before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Three grand or <laughs> nah, you know, and um yep. and then I'd I'd match them and see where they matched. Yeah. And then and then I sort of then that I was always pretty right. Yeah. And it always then so it just gave me confidence and now yeah, I've I yeah, I can price pretty much anything yep. that, that comes to my door if I've got the time. Yeah, man, that's yep. the biggest killer for people, eh? And wins and losses, yeah, we've yeah, no risk, no reward. Yeah. Like I'll 100%. price some shit that um no one would dream of pricing. I've had subbies and they're like working like other companies contract to me and yep. they're like, How are you doing this on charge up and like being the gnarliest extension or <laughs> rotten and I'm like, nah, this is all fixed price like and they're like, You're crazy. Yeah. But like some of that stuff's been like my my biggest win. Like, yeah. Do do you want numbers or do? You... <laughs> oh, up, up to you, bro. I'll yeah. I'll put it out there first. I've been screwed on a job and lost yeah. 120 grand. Yeah, so, yeah. I've cut even on lots. Yeah, yeah. Like um, and and I think sometimes when you've got a few guys, like you you will just sometimes yeah. you, you like fuck. Up. I actually need this job. Yeah, just yeah. Just to keep the crew going because you can see your next one's cream. And so, yeah, man. so you kind of bridge the gap sometimes with jobs that you're not even really going to make anything on, but it yeah. keeps your crew running. Yeah, 100%. well, you actually, I've gone and light on purpose before. Yeah, just to make sure that my boys are keeping fed, and then, but then you you get some that go the other way, like you might yeah. you might price and you might make. Yeah, you know, we're not even going to go yeah, into yeah, the yeah. percents, but you can you can make some crazy Good money. money. But yeah. yeah, no risk, no reward. Yeah. Um, those guys who just charge up all the time. Unless you've got eighty guys yeah. or fifty guys on charge up, and you're making ten bucks an hour, fifteen bucks an hour, you're never, yeah. you're never gonna um, make decent make money, decent yeah. money. So you got to yeah. put your balls on the line. Like, yeah. I could fuck up, and I could, mm. I could be wrong. And if you're wrong on a few, like, I could lose. Yeah, you lose everything. Yeah, but absolutely, man. So I'm, yeah, I don't, I don't want to sit back and take a back seat. Yeah, and, yeah going yeah. on that, I think uh, that can be real crucial. You do look at like your pipeline, or if you're a bigger builder and your average job is say four to six months. Um, if you're stacking in some smaller stuff or you've got a gap, you will take a job at a lesser margin strictly to keep your team. Yep. If you spend two to five years building up a good team and then you run out of work for six months, <laughs> you've just spent all that time. You know, I consider For, it looking yep. at like an investment. A hundred percent. I'm just going to take this yep. job, keep yep. everyone busy, but then yep. our pipeline's going to fill up again. Yeah, hundred yep. percent. You got to. You, so you always got to be forecasting, eh? Yeah, hundred yep. percent. Yeah. Um, yep. In regards of subbies, how long has it taken you to build up a good team of subbies? And um, people love knowing rates and stuff, so let's. I want to discuss a little bit of rate stuff around Tauranga and Papamoa, eh? Yeah. So it probably took five years, I reckon. Yeah. Yeah. To to build a good team of subbies, and now. I've, yeah, you got a real yep. good team, and I know that they're going to go on and um, keep my clients happy. Cool, keep me happy. Have you going back on that complacency question with your guys? Have you had to do you sort of keep a check on subbies? Well, not keep a check, but if you notice your plumber creeping prices up and that, will you do a bit of a check on that or look for a new plumber, or how do you work that stuff across the board? I I reckon it's healthy to keep two of all subs. Yeah, and they know that you've got two because. And and so they're never gonna start taking the piss if they know you've got two. Yeah. Like I have been caught, um, and I've been caught actually <laughs> recently because I'm not gonna say which yeah, yeah. sub trade, but I got down to one subcontractor I was using in a certain trade, and his prices were starting to skyrocket. Yeah. And my clients, because mm. I, I break down everything. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. And then I got three clients in a row hit me back on that one sub. Yeah. And so now I'm running two. But so that that's a perfect lesson that yeah, you nice. should you should always run two and it keeps your your subby honest too. Yeah. If they know you're getting two prices for everything and you just try and yeah. share the workload to them, eh? Is um most of your stuff that you're doing, like the extensions and the renos, are you doing all that on fixed price stuff or are you having to disclose like show an open book contract essentially? Show subbies prices? Uh, so yeah, you usually it's um like fixed price. Yeah, cool. But if I've got a real good relationship with the client, I'll usually just do an estimate. Yeah, sweet. and then just um cost plus margins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think it that actually works out better for the yeah absolutely. client most of the time too. It's an yeah. honest way of doing business, but yeah, some some people just want a fixed price. So yeah, you're obviously going to lo load it up to make sure that you're safe. Eh? Yeah, for sure, man. Yeah. I I think so many people have get scared around um fixed prices purely because oh you know I could lose money there. But if you're confident with the kind of jobs you can do, yeah, and you know 
you know where your risks lie in each job. I think yeah. everyone should be going for fixed prices, eh? Yeah, 100%. Personally. It comes with time, though, eh? Yeah. Like you're obviously not yeah. going to just jump in off the bat doing fixed prices. Yeah. Yeah. Do any of your subbies, do, are they all fixed price, or do most of them offer charge-up hourly rates, or is it all kind of square metre rate or point rates? So, t to be honest, like, I've done real well out of, this is a risky way of business, but... Yeah. I've priced heaps of jobs under 200k and never got a quote from a subby. Yeah, yeah. And I'll yeah, price yeah. the whole thing, and then I'll just get everyone in on charge up, and yeah. that's that's so risky. Mm. Like, and it, like sometimes my painter might have ran over a yeah. grand or two grand, or and then sometimes my plumber's ran under, like because yeah. I've gone on fixture rates, he's ran yeah. under five grand, like. And it, honestly, like some of the best money I've ever made, but yeah. it's such high risk. Like, yeah, yeah. Can be, yeah. You imagine being wrong and you, you can't go back to your client and be like, yeah. hey, I actually made this all up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I need a bit yeah, more. Yeah, I don't know. Like, yeah, yeah, that's worked out real good for me. Yeah, um, nice one. I, I have done that. And then, yeah, and then everyone, generally, they, yeah, my painters square metre rates, the yep. jib stoppers are square metre rates, um, the plumbers are fixture rates, the sparkies yep. are fixture rates if you are getting them to price it. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Are you happy to disclose some of those rates? Yeah, the ones I know off the top of my head. Yeah, cool. Yep. Plaster and painting stuff. Uh, they... So painting usually, um, unless it's real tricky, he's you'd, you'd be expecting somewhere from uh, fifty to seventy-five off the yep. floor. Yeah, yep. it's pretty standard. Yeah, yep. and then um, plastering, I think it's somewhere around forty-five off the floor. Yeah, cool. Yeah, depending on the detail of the house, so I think that's a standard. Yeah, can tile three bedy. Yeah, nice. About, about forty-five. It used to be thirty-five. Yeah, it's gone up forty-five. Um, Jib stopping five years ago used to be down around, oh, sorry, um, jib fixing used jib to fixing, be down yeah, around yeah. 17, now it's up around 25. Or Do you sub that out as well? Uh, depending on. Ha have um, done, depending on our workload. Generally yeah. we'll do it, but yeah. we'll sub it out if we have to. Um, and then what else? Are roofing? We, yeah, roofing. Corrugated standard? Uh, I don't know. I can, I've got heaps of them loaded into my computer. I can put yeah. it on the spot. Um, we sort of it might be 84 is yeah. it 84 we see square? anywhere from 90 to 130 yeah depending yeah. where you are and busyness yeah and then concrete like you've got some of the bigger companies that are still doing um driveways at 65 a square meter Shit, um that's cheap, man. but um we actually we we do concrete too and yeah we'll, nice. we'll just sub out just the lane we'll prep the rest of it but we usually try and come in around 80 bucks yeah a nice. square meter i know that up in auckland they're I was talking to one of my mates who's got a concrete and company there about 120 yeah, per man. square meter, 90 to, to 120. 90, yeah, 120 to 140, I would say. 150 depending on, for exposed, though. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but um, yeah, I just think that you don't want to be the cheapest price. Eh? No, like, no way. <laughs> like, it, it's foolish. Like, you're putting your, yeah. your family at risk, your creditors at risk, your staff at risk, everything. I, I, yeah, I don't think there's any future in Nah, no Being way, the man. The cheapest, eh? Um, yeah. I just want to wrap up, try and get a few more rates. Um, what do you see, sort of plumbers, sparkies, and like floor covering stuff, roughly? So I think the plumbers, if I price a project, a reno, yeah, I'll allow a thousand bucks a fixture, yeah, for them. Um, but they, they they might come on at eight hundred a fixture. Cool. Yeah. Um, and then I think the hourly rates around eighty five. Yeah. Um, the floor coverings. Tiles. Uh, tiles, 85 a square metre for tile supply, I think we usually allow. Yeah. And then laying for a standard, yeah. say 600 by 600, about yeah. 85 as well. Yeah, I was yeah. going to say you so sit 150 around all up. 150 to 200 is pretty accurate. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's mid-range. Cool. Um, so if we were going to use a PC sum, like if I yeah. hadn't decided, we'd Go probably a put higher. a PC sum of, yeah, 150 to 200, same yeah, nice. thing. Um, and then what else? Floor coverings, carpet. 90? Yeah, I yeah, 90 bucks. Yeah, I think that's pretty mid range, eh? 90? Yeah, yeah yep. 90's pretty safe. Yeah. But, um. Do you, you were telling me before about your kitchen kit in here. I um, sat down with the one of the Mitre 10 owners and he was saying about they want to compete all their kitchens with boutique kitchen companies across the country. What did you get your kitchen kit out for? It was pretty cheap. Oh, oh yeah, I might get in trouble, but, um. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was about, um, we put through a lot, eh? Yeah. Um, we, we were putting through a lot with Mitre 10. Yeah. So much now, but um, s sort of moved away from them a little bit. But um, 12 and a half. Yeah, nice. Including appliances and install. I'll check a yeah, photo and, into that. It's and impressive. honestly, um, it looks... Pretty sharp. Yeah, pretty sharp. At least you're getting plus. into the couple of 100k kitchens. It, it yeah. looks as good as a 50k kitchen. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Um, what's your... How many... When you go for material... 
estimates pricing um, do you work with one rep or do you have a good relationship with a couple same as the subcontractor setup how do you work with trade reps nah yeah I, I reckon that um the same thing eh so if you're sticking with one yeah and they know it yeah the, the, they'll yeah. Yeah, they might not look up you know yeah, so you kind of want to be known to to have a few connections yeah for sure otherwise the same as like the sub trades eh? yeah if, you, if they know that you're just using them they'll they'll creep the prices yeah. up yeah i've learned i've i've seen it I've, yeah, I've yeah i've done yeah. it and I've, <laughs> yeah so you've got to be known to have accounts yeah. everywhere otherwise yeah people yeah. think they'll just hold a gun to your head and yet they can kind of charge what they want yep yeah um what's the what's the workflow like at the moment down around here everyone loves knowing where's busy what's mm. what what's your pipeline looking like moving into 2024 yeah and yeah how long are you kind of booked out for yeah so we've got a we've got um not most of our crew booked out for towards the end of next year yeah it's good yeah and then um we've got a couple of the guys that we just leave floating for pop-up projects yep sweet and i've always tried to roll like that um but we're pretty lucky. We do a lot of government work, yeah, and I good, worked man. real hard on um, locking in some big contracts, but real hard. Yeah, like and taking people out for coffees. Yeah, man. Every Gotta ten minutes on lunches and yeah. driving around to see them and follow up calls and just working harder on all our leads. Yeah. Um. So, so we're real lucky that we've got those. Um. But a lot of guys have got yeah. next to nothing. Yeah. Like I, I get guys ringing me up every second day with crews. Yeah. That have got no work or guys that have shut down yeah, their companies man. with no work. It's it's that housing company stuff, eh? But Yeah, that's I, cut I always try to build my company around like all my brothers are like real successful businessmen. Nothing to do with building, but um yeah. Yeah, I've got a, a lot of good people around me and so my whole goal always was to set my company up to be recession proof. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. That was like my main yeah. thing I thought about every week, every day. Yeah. Yeah. Is there a demand for like uh maintenancey stuff down here, smaller stuff? That's always yeah, a good yeah, way there for is a to... demand. Yeah, there yeah. is a demand and we did get into that and I had like a, a massive portfolio of houses, but um I had I didn't really have the right guys to do it. To yeah. do it and I was getting callbacks mm. and then so I say I'd have like a million dollar job and then I'd have all these like five hundred dollar to like yeah, thousand man. or maybe two hundred dollar jobs and i was getting callbacks on the yeah the little ones because like you kind of want an old semi-retired guy who's boost around do them yeah it does easy them on he, the body yeah, yeah and who who knows and who finishes them properly and i didn't really have the right guys so i ended up shutting that down yeah fair yeah, enough. yeah but there's definitely there's always the demand for yeah for those maintenance jobs yeah that's cool man yeah Biggest kind of we um, still do sorry we still do, no, do right. maintenance for one, yep. one company yep. nice. yeah nice um, biggest kind of like uh, have you had any times we've had to like do a good pivot or a good shift or a lesson learnt on certain work maintenance could be a prime example anything else you could sort of add there yeah um, yeah so the maintenance I just I just found it wasn't worth my the headache because I didn't have the the right person. Yeah, so, for sure. Yeah, I've definitely trialed different industries, yeah, d d different sectors, and been like, nah, that's not for me. Like when I first started, I was pumping out new builds. Yeah, like for for a developer. Yeah, and, like and probably similar rates to what housing company guys were getting, but I was doing the whole thing from yeah, like, yeah from yeah. setting up the profiles Shit, to yeah. putting the letterbox. But um, and he was just paying me off. I was just green and young. Yeah, and he was paying me off what like the housing companies pay people yeah man and so i got out of that and then honestly got rung up by every housing company in town <laughs> and like do you want to come do our work um not for and I, I just i was just like nah and i and then sometimes i wouldn't know what was two weeks in front of me yeah and then I, the boys would be like oh you're working for me why don't you take them that's like yeah, yeah, a, yeah. a year's work in that subdivision i'll be like nah because when a recession hits yeah i'm only going to know that one project manager and yeah so i stuck to my guns and i've sort of you found, found my yeah found my different little niches though yeah i'm not a fan of that that stuff eh? i think it's good like if you're maybe just going out on your own you're starting to build but i definitely don't think you rely on that to to make money rely on it for maybe turnover or keep the boys busy but yeah um, or yeah. just the starting point eh? yeah yeah it's designed yeah, to fail i think <laughs> yeah and a, and a downturn look exactly is exactly yep. what's happened though eh? yeah for sure yeah. um what's your kind of goal or movements with with your company for the next couple of years what are you trying to have you got a goal in mind what's your ultimate end up so honestly, I just want to refine what I've got. Yeah. Um, and I just want to create like a good lifestyle for me and my kids. Yeah, sweet man. Yeah, so I'm I'm happy. I don't want to get any bigger. Yeah. And I just want to yeah just refine everything, get better systems, so I can go on holidays with my kids without 
mean, being in the office till five in the morning. Honestly, yeah. I went to Bali this year and the two nights before I went, I was in the office till four or five in the morning, just about to get away. Um, yeah. So I just want to just work on better systems internally. Um, we have got pretty good systems, but Sweet. obviously need need more more help. Um, and yeah, just want to get into doing my own development. Mean, yeah. that's good. Man. I think yeah. that's the good end up goal for anyone running their own company. They know how much money they can make. You know, you get all the true costs, not the obviously company costs. But yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's a good point. Would you start to look at doing that around here? Yeah, yeah, I'll, yeah. I will. Yeah, mean. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. That's good. Um, I think I had a couple more. We can cut this bit out. Standard. Two seconds, bro. You're right, brother. It's been pretty flowy so far. Yeah, it's good, man. Um, in the garage, seen a few toys in that there. How often do you get out on the motorbike, surfboard, etc.? cetera? <laughs> <laughs> Little adrenaline squirts. Yeah. Um, probably, to be honest, like the bike. I just like it looking all yeah, shiny mate. when people come around. <laughs> um, no, nah, I, I I get out not not that often. I'll, my sisters live up in Fongmata. Mate. So sometimes I go out there on a Friday, Friday night, Arvo, and go out there, have a cup of tea or... Sweet. A burger or whatever, and um, and then the jet ski, I don't really use that much. Um, it looks cool. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It goes fast. Um, <laughs> yeah, and then the boat, we're into. We take the boat out heaps. Me and then the kids go out fishing, and um, take the kids down the lake. So cool. The boat's the toy, and then the yeah, take the the contiki out from time to time when we need a feed and good shit. Yeah, I just reckon you've got to have a a, a release, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. man. Yeah, something to get away for sure. Yeah, yeah. Do boxing every morning. Nice. Um, as a yeah, just part of my morning routine. Good just shit. a real good stress relief. Yeah. 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 Have you had the work party for the year yet? Christmas party? Nah, so we get, we got the um the buggies yeah, going mate. down to Rotorua. Um the uh Rotorua Adventure Park, um going up on the hills and the some four wheel drive buggies and then have a barbie back here and then go out for dinner with the boys and, yeah. and see, see who wants to stay out longer. And yeah, good yeah, stuff. I guess I've got to stay out with them and keep <laughs> shouting them until they're done, eh? Yeah, yeah. cut that off at 1am, mate. Don't yeah. do anything too silly. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's good, man. I think we've covered um, pretty good topics there. Um, yeah, thanks for jumping on. If anyone wants to get in touch with you regarding work or a job, how do they find you? Yeah, so White Builders, Mount Monganui Limited. We're real easy. easy to find on Google, um, Instagram. Um, yeah, you you find us straight away if you Sweet. want to punch in our name. Easy. Yeah. Thank uh, you very legion. much, bro. Thanks, mate. Appreciate legion. it. Okay. Cheers. Cheers, mate.